We're heading back to the marina. It's gonna be a tight squeeze, kind of like a parallel parking job. And also this point has a counter current and it would be going against this wind. It would be super nasty over here. So the island is doing all kinds of weird stuff with the wind, which is making us really close hauled. So that's a tack of like 125 degrees. <laughs> that is not good going through a lot of patch reefs, but the water's so clear, it's a little bit deceiving. Previously on Project Atticus. After spending three years refitting our fixer-upper sailboat, we left the United States with only $2,000 and the goal of working while we cruised. We made it as far as Isla Mujeres, Mexico before we ran out of money and had to find work. For the next year, we did freelance boat repair jobs until we saved up enough cash to cast the lines and sail south to explore the Western Caribbean. Recently, we made landfall on the western tip of Cuba after nearly running out of fuel on a three-day passage from Honduras. That night, the winds shifted and pinned us to a concrete dock from which we barely escaped before navigating to a nearby anchorage in the dead of night. So we are underway and we're heading back to the marina over there at Cabo San Antonio. And we've got a handful of stuff that we gotta do in preparation for sailing to the south coast. So we want to get an internet card so that we can check the internet and check weather, um, figure out exactly when we wanna make this passage. And then we're gonna to top up on water, probably give Atticus a rinse. And then we gotta change our US dollars into uh, Cuban kooks. But before we do that, we're heading over to our buddy Alex's boat, um, who we came to this anchorage with the other night. And we're going to grab a jerry can of water and gas that we can fill for him because there's no room for him at the dock. Okay, so we just took on some of Alex's jerry cans and we want to formally introduce Alex. What's up, buddy? Hey. Hey, Alex. <laughs> so Alex is on a Corbin 39. Yeah, he's going to probably be heading off with us uh, to the south coast and maybe be cruising together. We'll see. But uh, as, as long as he has cool pants, he's welcome to cruise with us anytime. Japanese pirate pants. <laughs> <laughs> you got a cool pirate thing going too. That's what he said. I'm the only dweeb with yeah. like this. I mean, it's kind of Indiana Jonesy, uh -huh. right? Like a little bit. It's like a really responsible Indiana Jones, yeah. you know? <laughs> you can get this wet and it can dry and it won't deform. Yeah. Just got off the radio with our friends who are at the dock and they were saying uh, it's gonna be a tight squeeze, kind of like a parallel parking job as we come in. So they said they'll be uh, standing by with lines and fenders and stuff. Um, so I just wanted to get a debrief from Jordan about what our strategy will be and what kind of I should be looking out for. And we do this every time uh, we come to a dock if we have enough time. <laughs> you know, same as what I always tell you, which is your primary job is to fend before you worry about lines or anything, worry about, you know, are we about to impact something? Um, fend if you can, but mostly communicate with me that we've got a problem. The main thing that you should be looking for in regards to fending and, and keeping damage from occurring is the bow sprit and either the dock or the boat in front of us. Okay. Because that's the thing that I'm looking at several things. I'm looking at the boat behind us, and, and I'm kind of guesstimating how much distance there is between the bowsprit and the other boat. Even if you can't give me accurate distances, uh -huh. like say we're, you know, we're getting real close to this boat and quickly, you know what I mean? Like even that is helpful, mm -hmm. right? Uh -huh. Yeah, okay, you ready? Yep, let's do it. Let's do it. As we approached the dock, Desiree tossed our bow line to our friend Colin. But you can see another guy on the dock was trying to help us out by grabbing the bow line and pulling it in. He pulled the bow in so much that we weren't able to turn right and get our port side alongside the dock. Okay, bend the bow, bud. We're gonna need to put that bow line further forward. So. 
But it turns out he was just a customs agent and didn't know a lot about docking boats. And so, although it's obvious that he was trying to help, this is a perfect example of why generally we try and handle all of our dock lines and try not to depend on people on the dock. Hey, Buenos Dias. How are you? Buenos Dias, Amon. Okay. Welcome. <laughs> How Good to are see you? you. <laughs> What's up, buddy? My man. Oh, man. Great to see you. So we're, we're off to the local hotel to go change some money. But these are our friends over here. We got Colin. Buenos Dias. We got Devin, uh, his better looking brother. <laughs> and then we got Don Marie, Colin's Hello. wife. And Cypress. Oh, and Cypress. And there you are, little dude. Yeah. Cheers, buddy. Yum. Cheers, Devin. Salud. Nailed it. <laughs> Cheers, guys. <laughs> Cypress found some pigs that she oh. wanted to play with. Hi, little pig, 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 but pig. then the mom came by. Oh. And that thing, <laughs> that thing I think scared her a little bit. <laughs> That's good. So we're buying a uh, case of rum from Abel, and it's 56 kooks, so just over $60 for 12 bottles of three-year-aged Havana Club, so good deal. I should mention that Abel helped us the other night when we were pinned against the dock. He was the one that woke all the fishermen up and got everyone there and was pushing the boat off and tied off all the lines, so <laughs> we really are indebted to, to Abel and a bunch of the other guys here. So thanks again, man. <laughs> weather meeting at the bar. We've got our internet cards. Colin's scratching his lucky number off to see if, it's, if he's a big winner. What'd you win? Looks like about an hour's worth of slow Cuban internet. <laughs> okay, <laughs> me too. So we are back out at anchor. Uh, we had a really long day yesterday at the dock and I think we've kind of figured out what our plan is for the next week. And again, the goal is to round Cabo San Antonio and to head to the Cayo de San Felipe. But it looks like this whole week, the wind comes out of the east southeast and this is like 14, 15, 16 knots. It'd be right on the nose. It's a little bit out of the south, so it's really hard to get around this point. And also this point has a countercurrent, and it would be going against this wind. It would be super nasty over here. It does look like if we wait until Wednesday, we get this pre-frontal system going on. So you've got a, a front coming down, but it's sort of just died, right? Like here's the north winds, but it's really, really light. So it looks like there's a multiple day stretch there from Wednesday to Friday, which would be perfect. But that means that we've got about five days to kill until then. We're thinking about sailing northeast to some islands that are up here on the northwest coast of Cuba, um, and then checking out the reef that is up there, because supposedly there's some really nice reef. And so I'm really excited about this. Should be fun. Okay, ready for dinner? I am. Mmm, tasty. And how do you like the anchorage? I like it back here, it's very quiet. We got our one little neighbor down the way. There's Alex. <laughs> so he's not coming with us tomorrow. Mm -mm, and in fact, got... nobody's coming with us tomorrow. Yeah, so. Alex has some work to do on his boat and so do our other friends, Don Marie and Colin. So we're gonna go on a solo snorkeling adventure.
and we're close hauled. The forecast said that the wind was going to be south of east, which means that this should be a beam reach sail for us. But we encounter this sort of situation a lot where the forecast does, has a really hard time incorporating the land effect on the wind. Um, and so we're on the lee side of the island, and so the island is doing all kinds of weird stuff with the wind. And so I think the wind is com coming like more along the shoreline than the wind is offshore, um, which is making us really close hauled. And in fact, right now we're going too slow and not quite going hard enough on the wind to make our destination. So we may be tacking and going relatively slow, which means this might take a, a while. Right now, I'm gonna try to increase our speed by putting the mizzen up. Um, right now we're doing 4.7, which is great. A sail that is on a spar, like a mast, does worse going to windward anyway, because the spar itself actually creates a little bit of turbulence at the luff, and the luff, the leading edge of the sail, is the most important part of the sail when you're going to windward. Um, which is why, like, you know, head sails are generally the most important sail when going to windward. So, for that reason, the mizzen just kind of sucks at going hard on the wind. Now, if, if we were to fall off a little bit onto a close reach, then it would be helpful. Um, and I think it's probably worth having up right now because every now and then, like, a little bit of chop pushes us down. And, and that like, it gives us a little bit of momentum and then a little bit of weather helm and like kind of pushes us back up. So it's helping in the sense of like keeping momentum going probably. Um, but other than that, it's, it's not terribly helpful for us. So all we can do now is hope that throughout the day the wind clocks. Um, if it doesn't, then we may have to start tacking. Um, and if that's the case, it might take us a little bit too much time to get to our anchorages, so we may have to change our plans a little bit. So we'll see how the day goes. But for now, this is really nice sailing. All right, well, we're hard on the wind, so I am a little bit down for the count. <laughs> as soon as we put the sails up and we got a little bit of chop, I was like, Oh, count me a little bit useless right now. <laughs> I've come to a point in my sailing career where um, I'm not too worked up about getting seasick anymore. I used to kind of think, um, oh no, I'm seasick, this is terrible, why am I doing this? But now I just think, oh, you know, I'm seasick, it'll, it'll be over in like hopefully eight to 10 hours. <laughs> <laughs> and there'll be something fun on the other end of the seasickness. All right, so we've got some uh, reef coming up ahead. We're not quite uh, able to make the angle that we need to, to make our anchorage at Cayo Buena Vista. So we are going to tack over, get a little bit closer to shore again, and then tack back. And we may have to do this a couple of times uh, just to stay off of the reef. I've been kind of like standing and keeping a lookout quite a bit. Um, just to keep an eye out for uncharted reefs. I gotta be real careful about that here in Cuba. We're less than a mile away from the reef that is charted, so that's close enough for, for me, so I'm, I'm gonna tack over now. Our heading now is like 155, 160. And before the tack, we were making about 30 degrees, true. So that's a tack of like 125 degrees. <laughs> that is not good. Like that's, that's almost going backwards. And I'm looking at everything and like we're hard on the wind. The sails are all trimmed properly. Like. The, there's not an excessive amount of weather helm. Like, I, I can't tell that there's anything that we're doing wrong. I, I kind of think what it is, is that there's a current coming through here. And that would explain why we were going relatively slow. 
and that would explain why now that we're sailing northwest that we're actually getting pushed even further to the west so it might just end up being a really long day well at least you're sailing though right yeah that's true you know like i remind myself like this is really fun you know great the sea's a lot calmer we're going I think about five knots so all is good in Desiree land um, the only thing I'm keeping my eye out for right now is we're going through a lot of uh, patch reefs and they're all about you know 30 feet deep which is fine um, but the water's so clear it's a little bit deceiving so I'm just making sure I'm doing a bow watch every 10 minutes or so and uh, Jordan's getting some rest down below, and we'll be there around sunset. Might be shaking, but not stirred. Just a lesson that I've learned, and so it goes. Tables turn in your own. Cruising guides that we have say that uh, the trick with this anchorage is just to get as close to the island as the depth allows. A part of the reason for that is because there isn't a whole lot of protection to the east in this anchorage. So the closer you can get to the mangroves, the more protection you have to the east. So I'm basically heading straight for the island and I just reduce speed a little bit. We've got seven feet below the keel, um, and I'm just gonna rely on my depth sounder. So once I think I get to about maybe two feet below the keel, then maybe I'll, I'll turn around a little bit and then drop the hook. I'm a little bit concerned about the winds this evening and tomorrow morning. Um, they're supposed to clock to the east and then even the southeast. They're also supposed to be really light. Um, regardless, I want to get in as close to this island as I can. Okay, we're getting close. Yeah. Getting into the into the threes. Okay, stand by. Okay, standing by. Okay, go ahead and drop it here. Okay, drop it. All right, so we made it to uh, Cayo Buena Vista. Mm -hmm. And it's definitely real nice and calm and protected here on the south side because we're getting winds out of the north which is just so strange because that is not forecasted at all, but I've got to get used to, you know, the island effects on wind and the land effects and everything. And you know what they say. What do they say? If you're not learning, you're not living. Is that right? Oh yeah. Someone really awesome told me that one time. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that was hot, man. Yeah, I know, that feels so much better. <laughs> fun day bud yeah it wasn't the easy sail that we thought it would be but we got to a new place and got to get into experience a new anchorage and it's nice and calm and you always get that satisfaction of arriving somewhere so that feels good yeah so 
If you enjoyed this episode, make sure you give it a thumbs up because it really does help us out. And if you haven't subscribed yet to our channel, go ahead and click that subscribe button. That way you get to join the adventure with us and never miss another episode. And then finally, if you are already a huge fan of Project Atticus and you want me to get a haircut, then consider becoming a patron. Actually, my haircut has nothing to do with it. <laughs> but if you are a super big Project Atticus fan already, then consider becoming a patron. Other than that, we will see you guys next week and do some snorkeling. See ya. See you guys. <sighs> All right. Oh. Well, we are back out at anchor. We had a really long day at the dock yesterday. What is wrong? <laughs> sneeze. So <laughs> <You're just> like, <laughs> so close. I'd, even someone as good as me in front of the camera can't just roll through that. Just like, she's like. <laughs> You're doing great. Thank you. <laughs>